Consider a factory. What does a factory need in order to successfully produce a product? Pause the video and make a list of everything a factory might need. In the same way, we're going to consider a cell as a factory. As a general description of our course, we recognize that the way something is built is directly related to the way it works. In short, we say structure fits function. The diagram here is a generalized diagram of the cell with only the most basic or most common structures visible. You're going to be expected to recognize not just the structures but also what they do in addition to how they fit in this factory model. You're also going to hear a lot of mention about membranes. So it would be fitting if we started with an explanation of what a membrane does and how it functions in the cell. Take a look at the diagram above. We've got two different drawers. Which drawer is likely to provide the best access to very specific contents? If you said the drawer on the right, you're absolutely correct. In fact, much like the dividers in that drawer, membranes sort and organize the contents of a cell into compartments, which we call organelles. The result of this is that now the organelle has a higher efficiency and that organelle now can become specialized. As a result, the cell becomes more efficient and becomes more specialized. One of the most important membranes to discuss is the cell membrane. You often hear this referred to as the plasma membrane, and its chief function is to regulate and control what goes in and out of the cell. So it's clear that it would form a boundary between the outside of the cell and the inside. The inside we're referred to as the cytoplasm. You'll also notice that here we have a double layer of lipids, which is called a lipid bilayer. We also have proteins embedded in the membrane, as well as carbohydrate chains emerging out of the top. Even though the cell has a bunch of different structures doing different jobs, there is one structure that is regulating and controlling the whole system, and that, of course, is the nucleus. It controls the cell's many different activities. Within this nucleus is the DNA. These are the instruction manuals for how to run the cell. The DNA is so precious that it's actually surrounded by a double membrane, which we will call the nuclear envelope. Anything that enters or leaves the nucleus has to, do, has to go through the nuclear pores. Within the center of the nucleus is the nucleolus, and the nucleolus builds our next cell structure called the ribosomes. Ribosomes' chief job is to build proteins. They're attached to a structure called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, though you'll often find them floating in the cytoplasm. It's interesting to note that these are organelles that don't have a membrane around them. The endoplasmic reticulum transports materials. So if the ribosomes build proteins, then the rough ER and the smooth ER are in charge of actually transporting those proteins. We'll start with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They contain on the outside surface ribosomes, so they literally look rough. They modify and transport any of the proteins the ribosomes would be sending. The smooth ER, however, doesn't have any ribosomes at all. So its entire function is related to generating new membranes for the cells, as well as a very interesting function of being able to neutralize toxins. Notice that in this case, the rough and smooth ER are connected to each other. The Golgi apparatus modifies, sorts, and packages, and then distributes the proteins that come from the ER. They prepare materials for export out of the cell as well, so not all materials just stay within the cell. And finally, uh, those packages that they produce are called vesicles. And so here you can see what looks like a, a stack of pancakes here. And that's really the general structure of the Golgi apparatus. So when we made mention of vesicles, it's important that we realize they're just membrane packages of enzymes or proteins in general. And there are really only two vesicles that we're interested in. The first is called a peroxisome. You may, you may remember that hydrogen peroxide is a dangerous co compound within cells. Catalase is an enzyme that breaks it down into, into water and oxygen. So a peroxisome is actually an, an, a catalase-filled membrane package. Lysosomes are a vesicle with a similar purpose but a different process. These are filled with digestive enzymes, so they're good for breaking down any food particles or any damaged or unwanted cell parts. Even uh, organisms, maybe uh, parasites that might enter the cell, a lysosome is going to break them down. We can see a diagram of that over here as well. 
So let's recap quickly what we've done. We realized that all the, the whole cell is regulated by the nucleus. And within the nucleus is the DNA. The DNA may send a message out of the nuclear pores into the cytoplasm where it's going to find a ribosome. And here in the callout we can see the ribosome is building a protein and then it inserts that protein into the rough ER. The rough ER sends that off into a new vesicle which transports that to the Golgi. The Golgi then modifies, sorts, packages those proteins and builds another vesicle depending on where it's going it'll be either a lysosome, maybe it's a vacuole, maybe it's a peroxisome, or maybe it's going to be exported outside of the cell. So this is the workflow of the cell production factory. But there are other structures that are supremely important that might not necessarily be part of the assembly line. In this case we're looking at the mitochondria which is chief job is releasing energy from carbohydrates into something called ATP. This is simply a smaller energy molecule that's more useful for cells. The chief job here then is actually metabolism function. It's cell respiration. Some of the interesting features about the mitochondria is that it has a double membrane where the internal membrane is folded up. And this is where the respira cell respiration actually takes place. Also within that area, we find that new the mitochondria has its own DNA called mitochondrial DNA, and it has its own de dedicated set of ribosomes. So the mitochondria is almost like a cell within a cell. Now we're looking at the cytoskeleton, and as its name would suggest, it actually uh, functions as a support or anchoring system for the organelles within the cell. There are two major, there are actually a couple major different uh, structures within that, but we're most interested in the microfilaments and the microtubules. Microfilaments are used for movement, a lot like muscle contraction. Microtubules are much larger, and they're used primarily in a specialized structure called centrioles, which are uh, active during cell division. A special set of microtubules are used for movement, and these are the cilia and flagella. Both of them are used for transporting or moving the cell. And so here we have a single cell. Uh, this is actually a sperm cell. And as it uh, moves its flagella, it actually moves in a direction. The same thing with the cilia. The key difference is that the flagella spins a lot like the propeller on a boat, whereas the cilia might beat back and forth like the oars of a boat. Some cells, however, aren't able to move. They might be anchored down into a bigger block of tissue. In that case, cilia might actually move the environment instead of the actual cell itself. So we'll see examples of that in something like the respiratory tract where the lungs might be extracting uh, materials or debris that might end up in there and that actually passes things up the throat. The last major structure is also outside the cell and this is the extracellular matrix. This is a collection of fibers like collagen that are used to hold cells together and hold them in place. Otherwise, what would keep cells together? So collagen fibers um, as you may have heard, are involved also with things like skin. The loss of collagen is related specifically to wrinkled skin. So healthy skin, and maybe more importantly, uh, tissues that are cohesive are probably having a much stronger or dense extracellular matrix. So we've done a lot. It's time to pause and reflect a bit. How is a cell like a factory? Consider the list you generated at the beginning of the slideshow. Explain how the cell is like a factory. Include any role that each organelle may have and determine how it fits this cell to factory analogy. Any organelles that don't fit the cell analogy, make sure you explain why you think they don't.